Hi, GDR here in beautiful Jamaica with one more of the podcasts out there for Shantram readers and lovers of writing and reading everywhere. Last time we talked about some aspects to do with plot, story and so forth. And I promised to talk about character as one of the very, very important parts of your creative process. What I've got here is a bit of a look um, here in a whiteboard. You can have a look. I brought this along. I actually brought something for this podcast, which is um, a bit of an uh, overview here, a quick overview on character. The first thing, let's go, one of my first things that I do as a writer, whenever the, whatever the word, whatever the situation, I tend to go back to the root of the word. I'll look up etymology of whatever that word is. It might be justice. It might be honor. Whatever the word is that I'm sort of grappling with and trying to work with as a creative artist, I'll look up the etymology. So let's look at the etymology of character. What we have here is from the original Greek, all right, among other things, but from the original Greek to sharpen, mark in furrows or engrave. Think about that for a second. When you're creating a character, you're engraving on that character the various elements that bring that character to life. And engraving works with layers and it's with subtlety and with the flow lines that work through the character. So think about that. From that we ended up with the Greek Latin and character is to mark or make distinctive. So from that sense of character we get characterization, things like the content of one's character. We know what we're talking about when someone says such a thing, to quote uh, Martin Luther King Jr. from the great speech. When we hear that, we know roughly what people are talking about. They're not just talking about a set of virtues. They're not just talking about someone being generous or, or kind or fair or whatever. It's, it's all of those things, but it's more than that. It's the unique set of personal characteristics that make up that person's expression of the idea of whatever it is, justice and faith and so forth. So here we have in characterization the content of one's character and you get a phrase like, oh, you know, Leroy, he's such a character. We may then afterwards go, oh yeah, like, oh yeah, tell me more, or how? But we already get the idea of Leroy as being a distinctive person. Remember we go back to mark or make distinctive in characterization. So when you're creating your characters, if you go back to the root of this and you get things like, he's such a character, or then you get a phrase like, the character of the wine. What do they mean by that? The character of the wine. Well, we're going back to the distinctive qualities of it that mark it as uniquely itself. So let's go from here with this understanding, going back to the root of the word. Let's look at what a character is. Now, I've started with a human being. Of course, a character could be a dog, a wolf, as in White Fang. A character could be a horse, Black Beauty. A character could be an elf. Um, or a gnome or whatever. A character could be an inanimate object passed from person to person to person until that thing has a kind of life force within itself. So a character can really be anything that you want it to be and I don't want to limit your, your imagination on that. Set yourself free with that. But let's say we're talking about a human being and most of the, the characterization we'll do will be with people. Let's look at a human being, all right? It's a human being with a fate. What I start with this sort of basic little set that might help you. Remember, I'm not the first, middle or last word on anything. I'm just me. I just write in my own way. If people like it, great. If they don't, fine. That's okay. No pressure. But this has been helpful for me. So I'm passing it on, but I'm no kind of authority in myself. All right. What I do is I start with a fate. We come into this world as fated beings. Our fate is the set of genetic predispositions we have. It's the set of social indicators we have, the family we're born into, the nation we're born into, the city we're born into, the war or peacetime we're born into, the time of plenty, the time of poverty we're born into, etc, etc. This is beyond our control. It's a set of cards we're dealt called fate. How we play that set of cards that we get in our fate is called our destiny. We shape our destiny if we want to. It's up to us. Other, th other than that, fate shapes destiny for us if we don't allow ourselves to take control. So let's look at characters. They have a fate, which means they come into this world, go all the way back 
to the womb of for your character you're not going to use this necessarily in a story but don't worry it's going to help you and it doesn't take very long so when where and how was my character born into what set of circumstances was in my case i was born it was a forceps delivery and i had um, a mark on my face and it was bleeding and i was cut in in the process and it was very violent but then when i was born everything stopped and um, my mother was very happy, the nurses were happy, it was a, in other ways a perfect birth other than that for my mom. And she remembered it very well, but it was, if you like, a turbulent way to come into this world. Um, there are people, babies that are born into the water, floating from the, the seawater of the womb into another warm environment of water, and then they gradually emerge into the air. There are different ways to come into this world. Think about that for your character, go all the way back. Okay. So you've got when, where, and how was my character born? Your character has a past, so they have a fate, they have a past. They have a backstory. You can go in jumps on your backstory, like you're making a little movie about your character. Hi, you, can go, you can go from a kindergarten scene boom, to, high, to high school. You can jump from high school to university or to working in a factory or working at an office or roaming around the world with a backpack, and you can jump into that. You can jump into a relationship and have a quick glimpse of what that might have been like if that character met someone quickly, fell in love, and it burst into flames and burst apart again. You can do this kind of thing with your character in quick bursts. Something will pop out at you and say, that's my defining characteristic. Sorry for the guys, that was right on the microphone. That's the defining characteristic of my character. Bang! Something from the past is going to jump out. A fate, a past. A society of relationships. One of the definitions of a novel is that it's a society of characters undergoing transformations during the course of a prose narrative. It's one of the definitions of a novel. Of course, there are hundreds of them. So, okay, a society of characters, meaning a little network of relationships. It may be very small. That person's family may have been lost in the Holocaust, and they've had to build relationships. We found it very, very difficult to build relationships afterwards. And what they have is a tiny cluster of very close people. And beyond that, it drops away quickly because the sense of powerlessness and distrust is too strong. You may develop a character who is extremely sociable and gets on with everybody and is so popular, but yet has within themselves a kind of sadness or a darkness that people can't even perceive, even those close to that character. That society of relationships thinking, who do they know? How do they know them? How long have they known them? And get it down to three or four people that they know, apart from family. First start, how big is the family? What's the family connection? Is this person living in another country away from their family? Okay, then it's just tangential reference. Are they living still in a family home or environment? Get family, from that go to two or three, four key relationships that will tell the reader who's reading your work everything they need to know about that person that they haven't already been told by you. It's going to be told in who they know and how they know them and how long they've known them and why they know them. So get that mesh in your mind ready to go. And when that character then is speaking to someone else, you already know this character is meeting a new character in your story. You know in your mind that character went to high school with a person who's still very close to them. And that person can say, you know, I don't have many friends, but I do have one who's really close from high school. It's a tagline that you got from your own rich excavation of that character's past. And you can start creating that. That dialogue will flow and come naturally. All right, so a society of relationships. Very important to figure out where that person is in a little network of other people that you understand that. You may not even refer to them in your story, but it's important for you, if you really want a fully fleshed character, to think of how that character interacts with the other people close to them. Okay, a destiny shaped by the self or by others. We went from fate to destiny. The global moment, if you like, the moment at which a character seizes control of their destiny, let's call it a turning point, a change. They may have already achieved that. You may have a character who in the past hit a turning point and now is much more prudent, much wiser about what they do to the extent that they actually share their wisdom with others and are regarded as quite wise. That already happened before your story began and you can accept that, you can just say that there was a turning point in the back. But those turning points are vital. Even if your character had it in the past, even if your character has not yet hit the turning point, for you to know as you develop your character that your character is on a journey 
your character has a beginning, a middle and an end for you. That end is not the end of the character, so to speak. It's the beginning, the middle and the end of the character's journey. And that takes them somewhere. And hopefully it takes them to a, a sort of enlightenment and takes them perhaps more out of the self and less into a spiritual connection with others, with the world, with other people. That journey that you're creating here for your character, is it the character's destiny? And the key moment is, pivotal moment is a turning point, and that's up to you to insert that to a great or, a, or to a very significant or a very small, tiny degree. A, a throwaway remark changes someone's life or changes their mind on a, in a key moment. And we as readers know, oh my God, if that person hadn't said that to them on that day, the whole story would have played out differently. Because we know everything up to that point with you. All right, so it can happen like this, a tiny thing, but that turning point is really critically important, however subtle it is. So shaping the destiny of your character, when you look at this, looking at engraving, from that to making distinctive and marking, which is what you're doing. You're taking the clay of fictional characters and marking those characters, pressing your hands in to make the eyes, pulling out to make the nose, making the mouth. You're shaping that character, you're making it. You're in, then you go to engraving it with the very fine detail of who they are in developing their characterization, all right? Who were they? Where did they come from? Where were they born? What's their backstory? How did they get on with other people? Yes or no? Do they, are they popular or not? Are they shy or, or, or are they very outgoing? <laughs> and then, what is their capacity to shape their destiny? How powerful are they? How powerless are they within life? As for all of us is the big question. To what extent are we fully empowered as people, as beings? To what extent are we willingly perhaps disempowered in life okay think about that too for yourself as a writer you as a writer must be fully empowered you have to believe in yourself you have to be fully empowered you have to be omnipotent you may not express that omnipotence in arrogance that would be foolish but you have to be empowered in what you do you have to believe in it you have to make it real for you make it real make those characters come to life next time i'm going to give you a little hint on how to do that i'm going to talk about creating a character wall so that you're constantly surrounded by your characters and influenced and inspired by them so we go into the character wall next time i hope this one gives you a little bit of an understanding of how to begin thinking about your characters how to shape them and how to love them blessings and love from jamaica shantaram out <laughs>